everyone and welcome to video 4.3 Social Theories of Learning Constructivism and this is part of the AEDT 2160 course in online learning theories and models. So in terms of the analysis questions just to start to frame this around the constructivist orientation as opposed to the behaviorist one that we just spent some time looking at um, two things to consider going in and just take a moment to jot down some of your thoughts and responses to these. The first one is how does one come to know something? Big question. And the second is what role does discussion and dialogue play in learning? So give some thought to those. Take a minute to jot a few things down and then we'll jump into the content. Again, like behaviorism, constructivism is a very big body of research, a very big field of research. Um, and so this isn't an attempt to cover the entire field. It's just an attempt to give you the quick highlights and then some of our readings for this week and some additional readings within this video clip will help to sort of round out your knowledge and your um, exposure to constructivism. So constructivism assumes that the construction of language is a social process the construction of language. The construction of knowledge is a social process that involves the use of language. It focuses on these three main questions. What does it mean to know something? How do we come to know it? And how does this knowledge influence our thinking? And then hence the co-creation of more knowledge. Um, the argument for it, and you'll have seen this in Roland's course on problem-based learning as well, instructivism discounts the reality of this complex, ill-structured world that we live in. So that whole notion of very, you know, stepwise, a behavioristic kind of instructivism paradigm around this is reality, here is the box, here is truth, and we can then work within that box to learn it, um, really doesn't fit with what we know as our experience in the world, the real world, which is complex, completely ambiguous, continually changing, and really ill-structured. It's this notion of nothing really fits, and sort of the, the chaos theory um, and some of the development in quantum phys physics also feeds into this notion that, you know, our reality is very different from what the instructivism paradigm puts it out to be. And so constructivism attempts to counter that. And some of the epistemological considerations for constructivism are in the Kanuka and Anderson article. So just to highlight them here again, you're looking at dichotomies. So if you think of a, a continuum of reality, on one end you have objective, where reality is very objective, it's clear cut. On the other end it's subjective, unique to the individual and the person experiencing it. And then if you intersect that with um, knowledge construction, this is what they do in the Kanuka and Anderson article, where knowledge can be socially constructed at one end of the continuum, and the other end would be a very individual knowledge construction. And then from there, they do a very nice job, so I'm not going to just regurgitate it here, I'm going to point you to them. They do a very nice job of these four constructivist positions and locating them on those two bisecting dichotomies of reality and knowledge construction. And so take some time to read through and really digest what they're suggesting between situated constructivism, radical constructivism, cognitive, and then co-constructivism. Because that does a nice job of sort of laying the groundwork, especially within the context of education, of how we can use constructivism going forward. When we start to layer it onto online learning and the affordances that on the technologies and online learning provides, these are the types of things we see coming to the service, surface. So learning is active, it's not passive. Consequently, you need to present multiple representations of reality. There's no one right answer. Uh, in some cases, obviously there is, right? Life and death matters. There's some uh, mathematical equations that arguably have a right answer. Um, but in the construction of an online learning environment that's constructivist, you're presenting multiple representations as opposed to here is the one way, do it this way as the instructor said, and you'll get a good mark. You're also presenting real world authentic tasks. You're attempting to contextualize the learning in something that's relevant and meaningful for the learner. So this is starting to dovetail very nicely with what we know about adult learners. The second bullet point is that dialogue and discussion, that social aspect, is a very important element in learning. 
with respect when you're coming at it from a constructivist standpoint. So there'd be lots of opportunities in an online environment then to foster reflective practice, to support that co-construction of knowledge through social discussion and negotiation. The other piece is around new knowledge and that it's built on previous learning. And this is very similar to cognivist, cognitivist. Now we haven't gone there uh, yet. We went from behavior to constructivism. Um, but the notion that the context and content um, are dependent on being able to hang on things people already know. And so in an online environment that's constructivist, you would enable that knowledge construction to occur in a context and hook the content into areas that people already are coming in with. So this, of course, you can see that these, all of these then have implications for instructional design and the front end of how you would design an environment um, that is a constructivist orientation. And then the fourth bullet point is that the environment should be learner-centered. And so many of these supporting points above help to create that learner centeredness. Of course, the authentic real world task, contextualizing the learning, um, context and content dependent all depend on being able to know your learner and who are they as they're going to go through this experience. The last is a link, um, and it's a link to uh, coursework that was done as part of a doctoral program, I believe, out of University of Saskatchewan. Uh, but this link does a nice job of going through a variety of different learning theories and then talking about their impact um, for designing that type of environment. Not specific to online learning, but you can certainly start to make some connections and, and draw forwards. So I've left that there for you. I've given you the direct link to the constructivism part, but you may want to keep this link as a reference for future as you look at different learning theories. And then three other links that I'd like you uh, to take some time to take a look at. The first one uh, builds on our conversation a week or two ago in the course about, you know, online learning being like the Matrix movie. Um, so I think you'll enjoy the first one as it talks about what is constructivism in action. And then the second one tries to connect it quite directly to online learning, but from the technology side, not the learning side, so more of that open source software and how open source supports social constructivism. And then the last one is that dovetailing between constructivism and what we know about adult learning, which is androgyny, um, or andragogy, sorry. And so that's going to where you're going to see the connections and some parallels between things like centering in the learner experience, making it authentic, uh, between constructivism and what we know about adult learning. So I'll leave you to explore those links. And then the synthesis questions here, and we'll spend some time on this in our tutorial, given that we only have a short amount of time, but take some time to really think of your responses around the aspects of constructivist learning theory that you see evidenced in the current course that we're in together. And then taking a look at how you fall on the dichotomies as the Kanuka and Anderson article outline. And then how does that, based on where you sort of fall in the, those two dichotomies, how does that influence and impact your thinking about online learning? And then the final one is around assessment. So thinking forward to if you were designing this constructivist learning environment online, does it require different assessment structures? Why and why not? So I'll leave you to ponder those and uh, we'll pick up threads of this in our conversation in the tutorial. Thanks very much. Have a great week.